Hey you guys, welcome back to See Mindy Mom. If you are new here, I am so glad that you found me. Welcome to my kitchen. Today I am sharing with you another extreme budget meal challenge, but this time I am challenging myself to use very limited resources in my kitchen. For this challenge, I am attempting to put together a meal plan for one person for a week on a very limited budget using only my refrigerator and my microwave. So stay tuned. All right, you guys, it is fall. It is back to school time. And I specifically thought about this challenge because I was thinking about all of the college kids who are going off to college and living in a dorm or in an apartment for the first time on their own away from family. And it made me think about my dorm room days with one of my very best friends from high school and how we had a little mini fridge and a little microwave in our room. And we used that to feed ourselves quite a few meals. Yes, I did have a meal plan at college, but my schedule was such that it was really difficult for me to get all the way across campus to the cafeteria and still make it to my one o'clock choir rehearsal every single day because I was a music major. I could not miss that and you did not want to be late because my professor would totally embarrass us. <laughs> Knowing what I know now about cooking and about preparing meals and actually thinking back to some of the things I prepared myself using only my refrigerator and my microwave, like what would I put together now on a very tight budget? And I was also thinking about people who might be living in efficiency apartments or maybe people who travel a lot for work and just have a fridge and a microwave in a hotel room or maybe somebody who's just really busy and just diving into cooking and doesn't want to fire up the stove or the oven in their kitchen. Now, just a couple of disclaimers. Microwaves can be kind of fickle and they vary. Some are more powerful than others. When I'm cooking something in a microwave, I generally only cook it in 30 to 60, maybe 90 second spurts, and then I'll open it up and kind of give it a little stir and make sure it's cooking the way that I want it and put it back in. I typically am not putting stuff in my microwave for like five minutes at a time without stopping it and making sure that it's cooking correctly. Also, we don't put metal in the microwave and be very careful about the kinds of dishes that you are using. Even if it says microwave safe, I typically do not put plastic in the microwave. For this challenge, I use just a regular ceramic bowl, but also be aware that when you are cooking stuff in the microwave, it gets very, very hot, including the dishes that you're cooking in. So you will want like a napkin or a hot pad or something like that to remove it. And if you have used a microwave before, you are probably thinking that all of that goes without saying, but you never know. And in my 11 years of teaching high school students, one of the things I learned is not to take for granted that they know what I know. So just wanted to throw all that information out there for you. For this challenge, I shopped at Walmart and I chose to shop there because I felt like that's a pretty standard store that is in a lot of towns here in the US and most of my audience is watching from the US. And I also thought, you know, a lot of college towns are probably gonna have a Walmart, but I was also intentional in trying to purchase items that would be available at lots of different kinds of grocery stores and that would be among the lowest cost items, relatively speaking. And speaking of cost, I live in Oklahoma and the prices at my Walmart are what they are. They're probably going to vary from place to place. I know that food prices are not standard across the board, but I'm just working with what I have here. So you might need to make some adjustments to your budget. You might also want to purchase different things or change up a few of the menu items that I'm making according to your preferences or according to your budget. These kinds of videos are meant to just give some ideas or to be, you know, interesting to somebody who wants to come and watch this kind of content. So take that for what it's worth. I'm going to take you into my Walmart and show you some of the things that I'm purchasing. And then I will show you my whole haul and what I'm making with it.
Okay, so this is what about $15 purchased me at my Walmart. I got two boxes of just the Great Value brand Mac and cheese, and I bought this specifically because I'm gonna use the pasta and then the cheese sauce mix separately. One container of peanut butter, I bought the No Stir Natural Creamy. One eight ounce package of shredded cheese, I bought the already shredded kind because I didn't wanna take a chance that somebody wouldn't have a cheese grater. The 4% milk fat cottage cheese small curd, this is the 24 ounce container, and these are only $1.74 or 76 at my Walmart, pretty good value. And I feel like a lot of times we forget about cottage cheese as being a decent protein source. There's 11 grams of protein for each half cup serving, which is not bad at all. One can of tomatoes, one can of beans. I chose the no salt added chili beans. You could probably swap out a different kind of beans if you prefer. And then one can of evaporated milk. I ended up getting the fat free just because it's a pop top like the other two cans that I purchased. So this would not require a can opener if you were able to find the pop top cans. This is the first time I have seen this particular brand of oats in my Walmart. It's one pound of gluten-free oats. I did not know that all oats are not gluten-free. You have to check the packaging. The mom's best oats that I typically buy do not say gluten-free oats. These actually do say gluten-free oats in the ingredient list. And it was only $1.08 for a one pound package, which is pretty great. One package of saltine crackers. I bought the unsalted tops, but they have a couple of different kinds. Seven bananas. And this was actually less than two pounds of bananas. Bananas are only 49 cents a pound at my Walmart. So seven bananas less than two bucks that's a banana a day for a week like what a great value for a fruit one very small crown of broccoli and then i splurged a little bit on the pears this is five pears if i'd only gotten four it would have come in closer to my budget of 15 dollars. so i was a little over because of the pears but i chose pears over apples because the pears were cheaper apples are coming into season but the pears were only a dollar 18 a pound so i just kind of was guessing at that point um, where i was gonna land so i went a little over because of the pears which i'm going to use probably for a snack, but that's what uh, my money bought me. And now I'm going to show you what I'm going to do with that. I'm going to make several different meals with this using my microwave. So I have my receipt here from Walmart and before tax, I spent $15.81. We do have tax on food here in Oklahoma. They don't in every state, but they do here. So I ended up paying $17.16, but before tax, I was pretty close to that $15 mark. And one of the reasons I went over is because I splurged on the pears because I wanted some fruit and I was just trying to guess according to the weight, what would fit within my budget. So if I put one of those pears back, I probably would have been closer to my $15 budget. Also, I walked around the store and checked some things out and an additional five dollars would get you at least in my store some salt and pepper a nice size bowl or mug for cooking things in the microwave a couple of reusable containers like these for storing things in my refrigerator and a spoon now i purchased my canned goods with pop top so i didn't need a can opener but make sure if you are buying some that don't have the pop top where you can open it without a can opener that you make sure you have access to a can opener Okay, we're gonna make some pasta, and I have two different boxes of pasta here. I mean, they're the same box, I just have two of them, of mac and cheese, and I need this to spread across um, seven different meals. It's gonna be three different kinds of pasta, but it's gonna make seven meals for us. So since I am probably not working with any kind of a measurement, I'm just sort of eyeballing it. I wanna use a little bit less than half of this to make my mac and cheese today. So I'm gonna use about that much. What I'm gonna do is cover this with water, just like so. I'm gonna take my cheese packet and I'm gonna sprinkle just a little bit of cheese, like maybe a tablespoon or so of this cheese powder in here. We're not gonna use the whole thing today. And then I'm gonna add some of my broccoli that I bought on top of that. I'm gonna pop this into the microwave until the little noodles are cooked and I will let you know how long that takes. I'll probably pop it in for about two minutes, give it a stir, pop it in another minute and just kind of check on it until the noodles are done. Okay, so I cooked mine for two minutes, stirred it, put it back in for two more minutes and then stirred it again and I added just a little bit more water, a couple Couple tablespoons and put it back in for two more minutes and this is what it looks like now you'll want to be careful because the bowl is very hot so you want to make sure you have a napkin or a towel or something to remove it from the microwave now to this I am going to add a spoonful of my cottage cheese a splash of my evaporated milk remember I bought a can of this it's a pop top so I can just keep the rest of it in the fridge I'm gonna add some salt and pepper and then just a little pinch of my real cheese here, my sharp cheese. 
I'm gonna stir that all up and pop it back in the microwave in 30 second increments, probably just 30 to 60 seconds is all it will take. And then it will be nice and uh, melty just until everything's kind of heated back through and all melty here. Okay, you guys, here is my mac and cheese and I have already tasted this, it is delicious. I did let it rest for a couple of minutes just to cool down once I pulled it out of the microwave. Mine took about 90 more seconds. I just checked it about every 30 seconds until it was heated through and the cheese was all melty that I had put in there. This turned out so, so good. I can't wait to go sit down and eat this while I'm working at my computer. For the pasta recipes, I'm really thinking about, you know, half cup servings dry. And I don't always use a utensil to measure this, so I'll show you. This is what a half a cup looks like to me. It's basically two handfuls that fill my palm like that. So I'm starting with about a half a cup of pasta in here, and I'm going to add some tomatoes. Just a couple of heaping forkfuls there. A few forkfuls of cottage cheese, some salt and pepper, and then I'm going to put water in the bowl until it comes up to just about the place where the uh, macaroni noodles are. Just like that, see? So there's a lot of guesswork involved in this kind of cookie, but this is what we're gonna start with. I'm gonna pop this into the microwave and cook it at one minute intervals. Of every minute, I'm just gonna stir it up and see if it needs a little bit more liquid. By the way, if you wanted to make this meal plan gluten-free, a lot of the options that I'm doing with the pasta would probably work with rice. I would suggest trying it with instant rice, you know, like minute rice, in fact, Hindsight's 2020, but that might have actually been a better option altogether because it takes pasta a little while to cook in the microwave. So this is what it looks like after four minutes total in the microwave. And it still needs just a little bit longer to get that pasta nice and tender. And obviously letting it sit for a few minutes, which you'll have to because this is piping hot, is going to help it soak up some more moisture, but it needs some more moisture to soak up. I didn't add quite enough water, so I'm gonna add just a little bit more here and pop it back into the microwave. One minute increments until it's done. It will probably just take one or two more. Okay, so this is what my pasta looks like now. And now I'm going to finish that off with a little sprinkling of cheese. Stir in some yummy cheese. And then this is what it looks like finished. And you guys, I just tasted this and it is delicious. <laughs> this is really good. It's almost like a little, you know, kind of like a lasagna style pasta with the tomatoes and the cottage cheese in there. And then just the melty cheddar cheese. This might even be better if you have a little bit of cottage cheese left to put just a little dollop of it on top. I really like um, cold cottage cheese and pasta. I don't know why. That's something that I eat on a regular anyway, but this turned out really good. This is probably my favorite thing that I've made so far. Pasta option number three is sort of like a chili mac. I cooked my pasta in the microwave. I gave it a four minute head start. So I cooked it for two minutes and then for two more minutes, I just put my pasta in the bowl and then covered it with water and cooked it for that amount of time. And then I added some beans and some tomatoes, gave that a stir. I popped it back into the microwave for an additional minute or so. I let it sit for about a minute or two just to let it cool down. And then I've topped it with some cheese and I'll just stir that in and that will be pasta option number three. Ooh, that's really good, you guys. I just tried that. <laughs> that turned out really fantastic. Yay. If you are on a tight budget where food is concerned, personally, I think oats are your friend. And I only really learned how to eat oatmeal and how to make it lots of different ways and use lots of different, you know, additions to the oatmeal in the last few years. I wish I had known about it sooner because it's so versatile. It can be cooked lots of different ways. You don't even have to cook it. If it's quick oats, you can make overnight oats, right? There's lots of recipes for just putting some oats with some kind of liquid and whatever additions, you know, fruit, milk, sweeteners, nuts into like a jar or a container with a lid and you put it in the refrigerator and the next morning you have, you know, oatmeal that has soaked up all of that liquid and you can eat cold or heat up then. You can make it in the microwave. You can make it on the stove. You can turn it into muffins. You can actually put this into smoothies. So I just really feel like it's a very versatile, cheap food. And there's so many different ways you can make it. So this is what I chose as the breakfast option. And there are lots of different ways that you can make this. I'm gonna show you a couple, but there's actually 11 servings in this bag. So you could have one half cup serving three days and you could double up and have more than that. Or you could just use a little bit more than one serving and use a little bit more liquid in order to make just a slightly larger serving of oatmeal every day. You could eat the leftover servings as snacks, but there's a lot of nutrition in this little bag, in my opinion. 
opinion. This is my tried and true go-to way of making oatmeal. I just make some oatmeal in the microwave. I usually cook mine for a minute and then I will stir it up and I'll cook it for about 30 more seconds. You wanna keep a close eye when cooking oatmeal in the microwave because it can boil over. How much water you use just depends on how you like your oatmeal, what consistency you like it. I like mine of a thicker consistency, so I probably use a little bit less. Sometimes you just have to guess and check until you kind of find the right amount of water for your personal preference. And then I top mine with peanut butter and a sliced up banana. And I also add just a pinch of salt because it brings out the sweetness in the peanut butter. And this is like a perfect bowl of oatmeal for me. It's really filling and satisfying. And I um, eat this all the time, especially in the winter. A similar option for breakfast, but using some of uh, one of my pears instead. And don't forget that if you are making oatmeal, you could actually do overnight oats if you have a container of some sort, like a jar or some containers. You could put the oats and the liquid, whether it's water or milk or whatever, into the refrigerator the night before. And then in the morning, you could top it with whatever you want and you can eat it cold or you can reheat it. But that's another option for eating quick oats like the ones that I'm using in this challenge. Super easy meal idea that I legit ate all the time in college, and that is potatoes with cottage cheese. In fact, my Monday night routine with my roommate in college was we would make a baked potato in our little apartment that we had when we were juniors and seniors, and we would eat it with cottage cheese, and we would watch Everwood. <laughs> For real, that was like our Monday night thing that we did. Baked potatoes with cottage cheese and we watch Everwood. But what I have in here is just a couple servings of my hash brown potatoes. I heated those up in the microwave. I did add just a little bit of water, like maybe a couple tablespoons. Mine took about two and a half, maybe close to three minutes to cook uh, to the consistency that I wanted. And then I topped them with half a cup of cottage cheese, salt and pepper, that's it. This works for breakfast, lunch, or dinner. Really easy meal option here. I chose to use the hash brown potatoes in this challenge because they cook a little bit faster in the microwave and in my opinion, a little bit more evenly. I've cooked baked potatoes in the microwave before, but it takes several minutes and sometimes I feel like they just um, don't come out very even or they come out like too mushy. Um, but but I just chose to use the hash browns because I thought it would be easier. It would take less time and they'd be more versatile across multiple recipes. If you wanted to use real potatoes, you absolutely could uh, research that a little bit more. But that was just my choice for this just to kind of make it a little bit easier. Another potato idea, which was inspired by one of the ways that we eat baked potatoes or around here. And that is to turn them into like taco or chili potatoes by topping them with beans and tomatoes and cheese and stuff like that. So I went ahead and cooked some of my potatoes in the microwave. It took mine about two minutes. I always sprinkle a little bit of water on them too, just to kind of help them steam a little bit. I'm going to add some of my chili beans to this and pop it back into the microwave for about 30 seconds. Now that my beans are warm, I am just going to top this with some of my tomatoes and these actually have a little bit of seasoning in them already. A little bit of salt and pepper and a sprinkling of cheese, yummy. And there you have it, taco potato. I am cooking up something else with my potatoes. In here, I have a handful of my hash brown potatoes and then I fill the bowl up about halfway with water, put some salt and pepper in and I pop this into the microwave for about two minutes. And now to that, I'm going to add some of my cheese powder from my um, mac and cheese boxes, a little bit of my evaporated milk, just like this, and also a little bit of my shredded cheese. I'm gonna stir that all up and pop it back into the microwave in 30 second increments until it is heated through in the consistency that I want. Okay, here is my soup. I heated it in the microwave for 30 seconds and then stirred it and then did 30 more seconds and then stirred it and then did 30 more seconds. The bowl was very, very hot. I know I've said this multiple times, but it bears repeating. These bowls are going to be very hot. So you wanna make sure that you have a napkin or a towel or something to remove them from the microwave and to hold them. Mine turned out a little runnier than I would have liked. So I would suggest instead of filling the bowl up halfway in the first step that I mentioned, maybe just covering the potatoes with water and cooking them that way and then adding the other ingredients. However, I also intended to eat this with a pretty hefty serving of crackers. So as soon as I crumble these up inside here and stir them around, they're gonna soak up some of that liquid and it's gonna make a really hearty, almost like a potato chowder type situation. So I think this will be very filling. It smells amazing. So I will let you know how it tastes once it cools down enough that I can actually taste it. <laughs> okay, I've just tried this and it turned out pretty good. I definitely think this would be really filling and just really good on like a, a cold day because it's nice and warm. And 
and the crackers do kind of help thicken it up a little bit. I crushed some up and let them, you know, stirred them into the soup there. I wish that I could have figured out how to get like some turkey smoked sausage. I initially had that in my cart. I was going to use that across multiple dishes, but it was going to bust my $15 budget. So I pulled it out. But if you wanted to put, you know, like some little cut up smoked sausages, which are fully cooked in here, I think that would help enhance the flavor even more. I mean, it definitely has plenty of flavor with the cheese and just salt and pepper and with, you know, the milk and the macaroni and cheese powder in it. But I just think like a little bit of those sausages would have been really good in this, but you know, it will do in a pinch, right? I mean, it's tasty. It's good. It's going to be filling. So I'm satisfied with it. A little snack option. I have one of my pears here just sliced up with some peanut butter. Of course, you could do apples, as I said before, but I chose pears because they were a little cheaper than apples by the pound. So that's what I have for snack option number one. Snack option. It's hard to beat a classic, you guys. Crackers and peanut butter. Yummy. Okay, so there you have it. And per the usual, these types of videos are usually a um, learning challenge for me as well. And sometimes things go as I want them to. And sometimes things don't go perfectly. And I could go back and redo it and just edit that part out. Or I could admit that this is real life and sometimes we're all learning things. So a few things that I would do differently, knowing what I know now. Really the only recipe that did not work out as well as I wanted it to was the potato soup. And it wasn't bad, it was just okay. So if I was doing this again, and for myself, what I would do differently is I would not buy the box mac and cheese and I would just buy a regular one pound box of pasta. And then I could just make an additional one of those pasta meals and an additional one of those potato meals, one of the other two potato meals that I did instead of the potato soup. I wouldn't need the cheese powder from the mac and cheese boxes so I could just sub a regular box of pasta. I would get a little bit more pasta that way, be able to rev up the meals and the calories across the week would be the same. Speaking of calories, whenever I added up all of the calories from all of the food that I bought, it came out to around 13,000 calories. So it's right around 1850 to 1900 calories a day, which is not, you know, ideal. I would love to have the calorie count be just a little bit higher, but a person is probably not going to starve on that. And these meal plans are really meant to be, they're not meant to be sustainable. When I do these types of videos, I sometimes will get people who are really upset that uh, it's not the healthiest thing or that it used processed ingredients or that there aren't enough carbs or there's not enough protein. And what I am really thinking about whenever I make these kinds of videos is the short term. I'm really thinking of just trying to help somebody out of a tight spot, somebody who is in a pinch temporarily and just needs something to kind of get them through. It's not meant to be like a lifelong way of eating. It's meant to be just something to help somebody, like I said, who's in a tight spot and just needs a little bit of help in the short term. So thank you so much for watching. I hope this was helpful or at least interesting. I will be sure to check in with another video very soon. Bye.